glory. We're glad to have you in person tonight. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. And those that are joining us by our live stream and our internet, we welcome you in that name that is above every name. Let's stand and sing together. Those of you that are sheltering in place, watching us live, or those that are downloading the broadcast, you sing with us and enjoy, enjoy the blessings of the Lord together. What are we singing, son? At Calvary. At Calvary. Lift your voice. Years to spend in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burden soul my liberty at Calvary. seated tonight. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Appreciate the good service we had this morning and the people being baptized, people joining the church. We got more baptizing to do next week. We appreciate the goodness of the Lord and we thank you for it. Now, the Lord willing, Wednesday night we will continue with our uh, programs and we got off to a great start. Uh, Wednesday night, every department was uh, a good number and uh, we're, so we're really excited about it. The Lord willing, I'll be teaching a lesson in the main auditorium this coming Wednesday night on what happens immediately after the rapture. And you don't want to miss it, the rapture. And so we're, that was good, wasn't it? I miss Earl kind of hitting the drum and I get a good thought there. But we praise the Lord for that. We're excited about it and the Lord is good. I want to make one announcement. I want you to be praying for the next three weeks. Easter will be the first Sunday of April. And you know, we missed Easter last Sunday. We were uh, all sheltering in place. Uh, January of last year, we had such momentum. I told Miss Arthur, I said, honey, come Easter Sunday, we'll, we'll have a 1,000. If, we, if we're running 600 plus, now, uh, a thousand will be, I mean, no problem. Come Easter, we'll be setting out chairs. We'll be calling the police and the sheriff's department, highway patrol. I'll have to helicopter in and a parachute. We're going to have an awesome crowd. We had six people for Easter, me and the sound people and, and a few more. But I, I'm anticipating this Easter. A lot of people have cabin, cabin fever. They're ready to bust out. And Easter is going to be great. Uh, many of you may remember, uh, we've done this a couple of times, Brother Paul Pitts, who does that one thing about the scribe. He has uh, uh, condensed that to a 40-minute uh, just presentation of the gospel. And so we're going to do that Easter Sunday morning. And I'm going to follow that with a gospel message. And I'm hoping by then we can take these ropes off uh, we, in fact, I saw a visitor this morning take it off and just sit down, and I was glad. And hopefully we can, we can do that. If everybody will bathe and wash their mouth and wash their teeth and brush their hair real good, and maybe we can do that. But be much in prayer. I would love to see a bunch of people get saved this Easter Sunday by the grace of God, and we are excited about that. Brother Shane, come and make our church announcements, then we'll get our music and then we'll get right into the service. Before he does, though, I went by today and saw Miss Dot Grambling. That's the first time I'd seen Miss Dot uh, since way before Christmas. And she said, Brother Joe, I miss church so bad. And I, I would love to see the Lord touch her. And uh, I've been her pastor 36 and a half years. 
and I appreciate her, and I enjoyed getting to talk to her. Can you imagine uh, going three months of your life and not seeing anyone that you know? The folks, I, I don't know how to explain that, but that's not right no matter which way you look at it. And I was glad to see her today. And the Lord willing, we're going to get by and see Brother Tim. Did anybody see Brother Ensley's picture that they posted? He looks like Santa Claus. He's going to give Santa Claus a run for his money. And uh, we're asking God to heal these folks and bless them and continue to pray for them. But Miss Dot wanted me to tell the church, thank them for praying for me, Brother Joe, and tell them I'm looking forward to seeing them soon. So do that. Brother Shane, you come, and then we'll have some music. All right, once again, we'll just make a few announcements. It's so wonderful that the Navigators was in person today. I was so excited. Uh, Brother Joseph was coming out of there excited and had a good number, so uh, we're so excited about that. But this Wednesday, make sure you remember that Navigators will be going. Uh, the Youth for Truth will be going. The youth, uh, the Gap Group will also uh, be meeting there, so there are various places. And then, of course, we'll have a remainder of folks that are going to be coming here uh, during the main service. So you come out and be a part of that 7 o'clock Wednesday night and you make sure that you remember everything that's coming up with the change offering you can continue to give with that I believe is the treasure box still out there brother Joseph I'm not sure if it is but uh, you can still it donate anyway be. it will be glory to God so <laughs> I love it so you make sure that you do that and, and, and take part of that and everything that's coming out sister Alicia brother James is going to be having a wedding shower next Sunday so you come out and be a part of that and you'll be much in prayer for the remainder of our service When I think of all the many times I've been spared pain and misery even when I played the fool, your unseen hand was there protecting me. Though I've had my share of struggles, I must confess to this reality. When I look back on my yesterdays, I have to raise my hands and say, Lord, you've been good to me. all my sins forgiveness would be mine and faithful to the promise cleanse the stain that sin had left behind just like it never happened you held me in your arms so tenderly assured me of your mercy restored me completely Lord
good old gospel singing, don't you, tonight, that exalts the Lord and lifts up our Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Austin, come on up here, son, and lead us to the Lord in prayer tonight. I love this young man. His grandfather was the famous Dr. Walter Burrell, and if you've ever watched the movie Sheffy uh, that Billy Kelly was the bootlegger in, his grandfather is the preacher in the camp meeting scene, preaching from uh, John chapter 3 about Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness. And uh, your grandfather, Austin, got to preach at our other location one Sunday night from Exodus 15 on the bitter waters. And he preached on, he washed my eyes with tears. And I'll tell you, God used your grandfather. He was a wonderful, wonderful preacher. And uh, he's now in glory. I talked to your grandmother today. She's, what, 80, 82, and she is just a wonderful Christian. And I appreciate these young fellas living for God. And I'm glad they're not ashamed of old preachers like me. And I love him. Austin, come lead us to Lord in prayer. And then we'll have a special, and we'll get right into the message. And since I preached so long this morning, I, I may not preach quite as long tonight. But I'm going to tell you something. I enjoyed every bit of it. And if I had my youth back, you folks would be in trouble. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Amen. Come on, son. Love you, buddy. Too. Pray for you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful night that you have given us tonight to come and to worship you in the house with all of God's people. We just appreciate all the wonderful things you do for Harvest Baptist Tabernacle, for all the lives that you touch, not only here, but for those who may be listening on live stream of, of media, Facebook, or wherever across the globe. Just pray for Joe as he brings the message. Yes, may our hearts be touched. May our eyes be lifted up unto you. We just thank you for all the many blessings. And God, we love you. We thank you so much. And we ask all of this as all the honor, all the power, and all the glory for us. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, son. We appreciate Chris and Kelly. What a great job that they're doing. And uh, it's hard to believe Chris married this good, isn't it? And I appreciate them two little boys and, and Kelly and her and Kelly and her. Kelly and him are raising them up to serve the Lord and we thank. Kelly, you sing for us tonight. Love you, sweetie. Amen. Well, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> find yourself asking God where he's been ever get up out of bed saying I can't do this again have you ever been afraid of what tomorrow will bring and you're facing it alone at least that's what you think You think you've got nothing left to give You can 
heart He will lift you up He will be enough To get you through think of that great poem about the man that went to heaven and he stood before the Lord and he looked back over his life and down through life there were two sets of footprints and he said Lord what's those two sets of footprints he said my child one's yours and one's mine I've walked with you all the days of your life but the man noticed when he came to the dark deep dangerous path of life only one said. He looked up and said, Lord, why did you leave me when I needed you the most? <laughs> Whoop. He said, oh, son, I didn't leave you. He said, those one set of footprints, they're mine. That's when you're so weak you couldn't walk, so I just picked you up. Lord, have mercy. That ought to make a Baptist shout right there. I'm glad he'll carry us through. The book of Genesis tonight, please, chapter number eight. And we'll be preaching this morning on the life of Noah and how that he was a voice and he lifted up his voice as a preacher of righteousness and he was a light in a dark world. He lived for God while the rest of the world was living like the devil and in a world that went to hell in the flood Noah lives for God. His family was saved and his journey was safe. And we looked at the virtues of Noah. We looked at the vision of Noah and the voice of Noah. But I want to come tonight and preach on the victory of Noah. Noah experienced victory in his life and in his ministry. If I had a title for the message tonight and our media people love it when I have a a decent title. I'd preach on the subject on the other side of catastrophe. I don't know how you feel about it, but go home tonight and read at one setting, Genesis 6, 7, 8. And by the time you read those three chapters, you think there won't be anything left after this. Uh, there won't be anything left of Noah and his family or the whole world after this. It looked like it was over forever. But I'm glad there's a chapter 9, there's a chapter 10. There's life and victory on the other side of catastrophe. Oftentimes I've said to Mrs. Arthur, and, and I, you pray for her. She's a good woman. Uh, I, I don't deserve her. I'm surprised 10 people didn't shout right there. Alex, you be quiet. You don't have one at all. And, uh, but bless her heart, she has to live with me at least two days a week. How many of you ladies wish you could get rid of your old man six days a week? No, no, no. And, uh, but sometimes, man, she sees me at my worst. She'll see me when I'm discouraged, when I'm pooched mouth, when I'm fearful when I'm down and when I'm out. And a lot of times I'll say, this is the end. This is the end. I'm going to tell you how pessimistic I am. If I'm pulling for a ball team, and say if it's a, a baseball game, and the opposing team scores one run, the first inning, it's over. I'm a Braves fan, okay? If we score a run in the first inning, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I'm just that way. And oftentimes I've said to her, honey, I believe this is it. I believe it's the end. I believe this is the end of us. 
And a lot of times she'll say, well, the greatest thing in our life is when we get to the end of us, to the end of ourself, and realize there is life on the other side of catastrophe. There is blessings on the other side of the storm. And sometimes if you're not careful, we'll forget there is the other side. And if God don't let you get to the other side on this side, he'll let you get to the other side whoo, on the other side. So try not to get defeated and discouraged on this side. Thank God there is the other side side and we've seen Noah before the flood and we've seen Noah during the flood but tonight I want you to see Noah after the flood on the other side of the storm on the other side of catastrophe and aren't you glad there is another side look in Genesis chapter number 8 tonight and verse number four. Genesis chapter eight and verse number four, and the ark, say it with me, and the ark did what? Rested. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. Ararat in the Hebrew means exalted ground or literally resurrection territory. When the ark came to rest, it did not come to rest in a valley low. It did not come to rest on a stormy sea. But it came to rest, amen, on elevated or resurrection ground. Brother, when Noah and his family walked off of that ark, they were walking on higher ground. God elevated him to another level in his walk with God. And I'm glad on this side, on the other side, when we come through our storms and through our problems and through our affliction, buddy, God elevates us to another level. I'm not a prophet, nor the son of a prophet. Never came to be, claimed to be a prophet. But I got a hankering, and you old timers know what that means. I got a hankering in my soul that the church of Jesus Christ that's on the earth today, oh boy, my critics get a hold of this, they'll call me all kind of names. I believe the church of Jesus Christ today is on the threshold, oh glory, Hallelujah. Amen. Of one of the greatest revivals that the church has seen in a long time. I'm telling you, I see it. Every church I have preached in since we started going back, man, there's a hunger. It's like feeding candy to a new baby. They're loving it. I got a call today while I was eating my uh, uh, my, my lunch and it was the pastor that I preached for Friday night he said oh brother George I just want to call you it, it, it got on a while ago at church it got on a while ago that little boy got saved Friday night his sister got saved today and, and we had more people I'm seeing that everywhere I go the Lord willing will be flying out early in the morning to Dr. Trebers in California and he was talking to me on the phone Saturday. He couldn't hardly talk for crying. He said, Joe, it's building. The momentum's building. No, we're not back in our building. Our county's got us locked down and we're still out in the parking lot. But he said, the momentum is building. God's people are thirsty. God's people are hungry. God's going to use you greatly. God's getting ready to do something. I'm feeling a strong of anointing, hallelujah, on my life than I've ever felt. I'm more excited about being a preacher than I've ever been. I believe God's gonna elevate the church of Jesus Christ to another level. We're gonna see revival on the other side of this pandemic. Well, glory. We're gonna look back and say like David, it was good for us. Because God, hallelujah, aren't you glad what the devil means for evil? God means it for good. 
And I'm glad God is still on the throne. He came to rest on elevated ground, Mount Ararat, resurrected territory. When they walked off of that ark, buddy, they were treading on higher ground. Let me deal with the numbers that are listed in this verse. Remember I said this morning that Noah was the eighth person from Adam in the genealogy. Eight is the number of new beginning. And the ark came to rest. By the way, the Hebrew word Noah literally means rest. If you read all of Genesis 5 in one setting and the first eight verses of Genesis 6, my God, somebody needed some rest. The world is reeling and rocking with the gross, diabolical sins of mankind. The earth is in the throes of wickedness. It's in the lap of the wicked one. Man's intent and thought is only evil continually and the whole world is so lost in wickedness that God repented that he's made man in the beginning and he's about to wipe the earth clean. But God brings a man with a new beginning and Noah's name, the Hebrew means rest. God's going to bring rest. Well, glory, God's going to bring rest on the other side of the storm. And the Bible said that the ark came to rest. I'm glad the Bible said there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Watch this. Eighth person, new beginning. The text said it came to rest on the seventh month. Seven in the Bible is the number of God's divine perfection. Oh, we may not live in a perfect world now, but on the other side of the storm, God's going to bring seven, his divine number of perfection. It came to rest on the 17th day. 17 in the Bible is the number of victory. Can I just stop and say, only a sovereign God can write a book like that. Oh, that the number of total victory in the month of perfection with the eighth person, the new beginning, who means rest by the name of Noah. Aren't you glad on the other side of catastrophe, on the other side of calamity, on the other side of the storm, there's victory, there's perfection, there's rest, there's a new level, and there's a brand new beginning in our walk with Jesus Christ. I'm glad on the other side, on this side, there's victory. And I'm glad on the other side of this side, there is victory in Jesus Christ. Let me give you three things that Noah and his family experienced on the other side of the storm. First of all, in chapter number eight, look in verse number 11. Genesis chapter eight and verse number 11. Notice what the Bible said. And the dove came in to him in the evening. And lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So knew, so Noah knew that the waters were abated from off of the earth. So on the other side of the storm, there was the dove with the olive leaf plucked off. Now you Bible students know that these animals, these birds, these animals in the Bible represent things. When you see the lion roaring, it is a dangerous beast. When you see the eagle flying, it is a picture of majestic power and majesty. But when you see this little dove in the Bible, it speaks of peace and it speaks of purity. That little dove with that olive branch in its mouth flying in and out of that ark, Lord have mercy, God was saying, there's peace on the other side of calamity. There's peace on the other side of catastrophe. There's peace on the other side of the storm. Boy, I believe that's associated with the Lord Jesus Christ. Long lay the world in sin and error pining. Man's unbelief had reached a feverous point. Man's sin and man's depravity had reached its lowest depths. But all of a sudden the child is born and a son is given and his name is called Emmanuel. That means God with us. 
and he grew up in an obscure carpenter shop and he grew up in an obscure village of Nazareth but on his bar mitzvah on his 30th birthday Lord have mercy he's down by the waters of the Jordan and there's that wild eyed preacher by the name of John the Baptist fulfilling righteousness baptizing converts and Jesus walked up and said John I want you to baptize me and John said I'm not even worthy to tie your shoes but Jesus said to fulfill righteousness I want you to baptize me and so John baptizes Jesus on his bar mitzvah on his 30th birthday hallelujah and baptizes him in that Jordan River and I don't know what it did for John I don't know what it did for the bystanders but heaven got tore up God rolled back the heavens and spake with a voice that shook the foundations of the earth this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased and son flying out of the glory world flying out of the glory world it's this dove and the Bible said like a whoop under the Holy Ghost of God and it just it just flutters over the shoulders of God's son and there Jesus stands there in that water and that little dove is flapping its wings. You know that dove when Noah let it out. Oh the Bible said it never ever returned unto him again and that dove is still flying all through the Old Testament that dove is still flying because no one is perfect no one is pure enough for that dove to land on but there stands our perfect Savior Lord have mercy I'm about to preach myself to death. There stands our perfect Savior the immaculate Son of the living God and here the dove and he lights on Jesus and empowers Jesus and he comes out of that river and for the next three and a half years he heals the sick and cures the sick and heals the sick and raises the dead because that dove brought perfection and that dove brought peace and on the other side of that storm that dove flies in and says the rain is over and the thunder's over and the lightning is over and your journey's over and the day Danger's over, and Noah, peace, wonderful peace. But aren't you glad on the other side of our calamities, on the other side of our catastrophes, God tells us it's okay, it's under control, and there's peace on the other side of our difficulty. Thank God for the dove, the heavenly dove, well, glory, that flutters in our heart. God said it's over. You made it and there's peace on the other side. I like it when my, growing up my mother would say at times, now son, it's going to be all right. My dad would get that old big chin and I used to make fun of my daddy's second chin not knowing one day I would have one. I'm working on a third and a fourth Although Miss Arthur did encourage me yesterday very much, I came in and she met me at the kitchen and wrapped her arms around me and she said, Woo, baby, I can still get both arms around you. Almost. I used to make fun of that little chin that Daddy had. And I'd say, Daddy, what's that come from? He said, Son, I'm not fat. No, no, no. He said, I preach hard. And as I preach, I stretch my voice and well, you gotta blame it on something. And they'd bow that little head and he'd say, son, don't you know everything's gonna be all right? Uh, growing up, Joseph and Joanna would get in my lap many times and say, it's gonna be okay, daddy. It's gonna be okay, daddy. And I'd look over at Miss Arthur and I want her to say the same thing and she'd say, suck it up, quit complaining, quit whining, be a man, face the music. Yeah. I love it when my family, my friends, there's been times you knew I was burdened. I love the spiritual perception of some of our members. Some, they can look at me like a, most of you can read me like you can your newspaper. You know when I'm hurting. You know when I'm carrying a load. And I've heard you go by, but 
Heard you go by me many times and say, preacher, I don't know what you're dealing with, but it's all over your face. I can see it. You're burdened. You're, you, 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 got a, you got pressure on you. And preacher, you're going to be all right. You're going to be okay. God's going to bring you through. And I, I appreciate that. And I love that. I love it when mother said it. I loved it when daddy said it. I love it when my friends and my family says it. And I appreciate it. But I want to tell you, there's one I really love to hear. Say it's going to be all right when the sweet dove of the Holy Ghost comes upon me and God assures me, son, I got this one. I'll carry you through this one. I love to hear him say, everything's gonna be all right because he's the only one that can make it all right. And I'm glad on the other side of catastrophe, there is the dove. And that dove signifies peace. Peace in the time of trouble. Peace in the midst of the storm. Thank God tonight for God's peace. Come, if you will, to chapter number eight of Genesis. Look, if you will, in verse number 20. Not only do you see the dove on the other side of catastrophe, but look in chapter eight, verse number 20. And Noah builded, say this little word here, an altar unto the Lord and took every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings, say it with me, on the altar. You have an altar on the other side of catastrophe. You say, well, what's so significant about that? Well, let's apply the law or the principle tonight of first mention. When you read something for the very first time in the Bible, it's big because it sets the stage. There are certain things about it you'll see every time it's mentioned after that. For instance, the first time the word love is in the Bible is in Genesis 22 when Abraham and Isaac are walking up the mountain. The first time you read the word shield in the Bible is in Genesis 15 when God reminds Abraham against the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. The first song you have in the Bible is in Exodus 15 after they're redeemed out of Egypt and Exodus chapter number 14 because as long as you're in bondage in Egypt, you have nothing to sing about. But when the blood makes a way, when there is no way, it'll put a song in your heart and it'll give you something to sing about. Well, of all the most precious words of Christianity, think of them. We talk about the church. We talk about the pulpit. Think about the building, the edifice, the local physical building. We talk about the pews. We talk about the pulpit. We talk about the baptistry. We talk about the foyer. But listen to me tonight. In this room tonight, oh God, outside of God's holy divine desk where the word of God is proclaimed, the most precious place in this church outside of God's pulpit is before me tonight. And these are not steps to a platform. This is called an altar. By the way, this is not a stage. This is a platform. This is a pulpit. And we're having church. And this is the altar. Do you realize what a special, unique place this altar plays in the lives of our people? Some of you were saved at this altar. Joseph, some of you clasped hands with your sweetheart and pledged heart and hand at this altar. Amen. Son, I'm so glad glad you married a, a beautiful girl that's intelligent and you, you, you've given me two of the most wonderful grandchildren and man, son, if you don't do anything else in your life, thank God for them kids. They're awesome. They play the piano, they sing, they're driving buses, they're teaching Sunday school class. That's awesome for children their age. Some of us, I started to say I've said our last goodbyes, but we Christians, there's no such thing as last. Woo, Gus, I just felt Jesus on that point. 
But Humphreys, a lot of us have wept and cried. Right here in this spot, boy. The casket was closed right here on this spot. Well, some of us have been here and had our bodies healed. That's a Baptist church, but we've had it. Some of us came here and got our burdens lifted. Some of us have come here and got wisdom and direction for our lives. Well, glory. We've cried here. We've shouted here. We've wept here. We've worshiped here. We've praised here. We've thanked God here. Think about what a significant place the altar plays in the life of a believer. Well, the first time you read the word altar in the Bible is in Genesis chapter number eight. There are no altars mentioned before Genesis eight. And the Hebrew word translated altar in your English Bible means to be elevated. It means to be lifted up. Oh, and notice, well, glory. Notice what he did at this altar. He took the living fowl and the living creature and killed it and divided it and put the sacrifice on the altar. You see, that sacrifice that's gonna appease and please a holy, righteous God, it's not laying on the ground that is cursed by the fall. It is... It is placed on an altar. The sacrifice is exalted. It's lifted up from the cursed ground. It's lifted up to God. That altar is lifting up the sacrifice. It is lifting up the propitiation. It is lifting up the praise offering. It is lifted up the sacrifice of praise. Dear God Almighty, and on the other side of that storm, not only were they walking higher, not only were they living higher but their praise was lifted up and their sacrifice was lifted up and their thankfulness was lifted up and boy on the other side of problems on the other side of catastrophe on the other side of defeat hey you know what we ought to do at least on the other side come on help me get them hands up and lift him up tonight exalt his name and praise his name and give him glory and magnify him and lift him up and say God we've been through the flood we've been through the storm we've been through the catastrophe but Lord you didn't leave me and you didn't fail me you are faithful to me hallelujah lift him up tonight and magnify his name well glory hallelujah just do that a couple of times and you say I don't feel like doing that you do that a couple of times you'll feel like it son they've been shut in that ark all them days Son, that, Lord have mercy. I got a wild imagination. Can I use it? Can you imagine some of the women today, some of our wives, been stuck on that ark? I, I don't know about the, the lady that you're married to but the one I'm married to and she just left to go check the nursery and while she's gone I will deal with this I'm brave shut up why do you have to put something in a certain spot if you just leave it we'll know where to get it the next time I feel revival in this church. You pile your clothes up in that corner because you're going to need them again. You throw all that stuff in that closet so nobody trips over it because you're going to need it again. No need to make up the bed. You're going to get right back in it in a little while. Do any one of you men live with, well, they, they've got a psychological term for that. CDL, what is it? What is it? Oh, CD, I didn't know. 
AC, DC, whatever you want. <laughs> well, glory. What is it now? OCD, what is that? What'd you say, Wesley? <laughs> Barry, you ready to do some more marriage canceling in room number three? We're gonna send you one right here, man. I always gotta put it. Can you imagine Mama Noah trying to keep house? Can you imagine her trying to be ACDC, whatever you said it was a while ago? OCDC, whatever you want to call it, ABCD, whatever. Can you imagine her trying to keep house? And boy, that, that, that boat's a rocking. That boat goes down in the depth, and that boat comes to the height. Man, it goes down in the depth again. And by the way, did you notice there are two things that are not on that boat? There is no anchor, because this world was not their home. And there was no stirring will because God's a God in this ship. And son, that heart goes up and it goes down. It's tossed to and fro. I mean, all them animals and all them people, I'm sure it got hectic in there. I'm sure it got a little stuffy in there. I'm sure every once in a while it got kind of weary and kind of dreary. And I can hear old mama Noah say, Noah, it's bad in here. It stinks in here. Everything's chaos in here. And Noah would say, mama, it may be a little bit bad in here, but it's better in the inside. My God, honey, that it is on the outside. And boy, they've been in that ark. They've been in the depths. They've been in the deep. They've been tossed to and fro wondering if they'll ever to survive. And all of a sudden, brother, that rock... Hey man, that anchor hits the rock uh, on resurrection ground and they walk out of that ark and no wonder they build them an altar. No wonder they offer the sacrifice of praise. No wonder they lift it up to the God that was faithful and to the God that's brought them through. Let me tell you something, church, tonight. We're behind on our praise and our thanksgiving and our worship and our adoration and our lifting up holy hands. What a mighty God we serve. God's been good to us. Anybody here God's been good to? God's been good to you, raise your right hand. If God's been real good to you, raise your left hand. If God's been better to you than you've been to him, lift both of them and say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because on the other side of the storm, on the, <laughs> help yourself, son. Help yourself. Help yourself, boy. Help yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. On the other side of the storm, there's a dove that says peace, and there's an altar that says praise, praise, hallelujah, glory, and honor, and dominion, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Woo! God is good. God is great. We should have drowned it in the flood. We should have went to hell with an antediluvian outfit. And we would have, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And aren't you glad in your dark night, on your way to hell, you found grace in the eyes of the sovereign God of the glory world. And on the other side, let's lift him up. Magnify. Oh, I'm about to get a case of the can't help it right there. And magnify that name that is above every name. Well, glory. On the other side of the storm, there's the dove that says peace. There's the altar that says praise. Oh. Hallelujah. I told Miss Arthur today, I said, baby, I'm not the man I used to be. She said, well, back it off a notch or two. And I said, no, I'm a trying. But when God bleeds on the backside of my soul and I feel the wind of the Holy Ghost, if I've stopped getting my breath, it's worth the trip. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. The dove, the altar. And last but not least, come to chapter number nine in verse number 13. 
on the other side of catastrophe, on the other side of chaos, on the other side of the storm, the dove, the altar. But now you see something else mentioned for the first time in the Bible. Chapter 9, verse number 13, look what he said. I love it. He said to Noah in the Noahic covenant, I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and thee and the earth. Verse 16, and the bow shall be in the cloud. And the bow shall be in the cloud. Oh, glory. And I will look upon it that I may remember that you may remember that I have made you a promise. I have made you a covenant. Can I remind you that rainbow did not appear before that storm? That rainbow did not appear even during that storm. But praise God, children, on the other side of the storm, when the sun came out again and the sun shined again, that rainbow stretched from sky to sky. It began to shine and God said, there's my covenant, there's my promise. I've made a promise to you. I didn't fail you before and I'll never fail you. The longest days of your life. For that dove says peace and that altar says praise, but that rainbow says promise. Did you know you can't have a rainbow without a massive disturbance? You can't have a rainbow without thunder and lightning. You can't have a rainbow without rainy sky. You know what literally happens on the other side of a storm? Them water pellets are still in the atmosphere. And when that sun comes up on the... Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. When that sun comes... When the sun comes up tomorrow, dear Lord, I though weeping may endure for a night... Oh, I'm glad the sun's coming up in the morning on the other side of the catastrophe, on the other side of the massive disturbance, that sun comes out on the other side of the storm and as them bright sun rays penetrate through them all appellants, it acts like a prism and both are your natural colors lit up in the sky. If it wasn't for the storm, you wouldn't have a rainbow. I wanna tell you something tonight. If it wasn't for the storms and the trouble and the affliction and the trials of life, you and I wouldn't appreciate the mountaintops and the good times and the blessings of God and I want to tell some child of God tonight you may be on your boat ride tonight and you may be going through the depths tonight, you may be carrying the heaviest burden, facing the most furious storm but I've come to tell you the sun's going to shine again, the sun's going to shine again, the sun's going to shine again, it can't help but shine again because he's the son of righteousness with healing in his way glory and that rainbow comes out now, have you ever noticed have you ever noticed you've only seen half you only see half but rainbows are not in halves there are complete circles I read this in the encyclopedia I had my encyclopedia one time on a Delta flight. When I read this, you know, they've already told you, beware of people that's acting suspicious. Well, when you got a fat preacher in a necktie and sitting there reading an encyclopedia and he goes to crying and shouting, they're gonna call the popo on you. Kind of get a witness right there. And I read this that said, the only way to see a complete rainbow is you've got to get off of the earth. The only reason why you see this top and no bottom, the earth blocks out the completeness or the affliction or the picture of the rainbow. 
But I'll give you this testimony. Tonight I have seen at least two times in my life a complete rainbow. One time was at Buffalo, New York, standing there at that big old waterfall. And we took that little boat ride called the Mist. Man, if you think that uh, American side called the Bridalville or something, man, look over at that horseshoe on that other side. But we took this boat ride, got up under it. Boy, you talk about power, power. And then we, we got off the boat ride and we went down in this cave, down in this tunnel. And I don't think I would do that at my age now. But we walked out on this wooden platform. And the next thing I know, Joseph and Joanna and Mrs. Arthur and myself are standing over the fall. And we look down as long as we were in the parking lot looking up, we just saw halves. Well, glory, but when we got to the top and looked back, we were off the ground, we could see the complete one. One day I was on my way to a meeting and up going down 85 at Hartsfield National Airport. There had been a massive storm and I told you that we better go, man, the plane's gonna be all behind, everything's gonna be messed up and I'm telling you, stretched over Atlanta Airport was the prettiest rainbow you've ever seen and buddy, by the time my flight got lifted up and so as we got, man, I looked back on it and it was a complete circle. I've seen it twice but I had to leave the earth because as long as you're bound to this whole earth, you only see the half. Now listen to that. You only see the half. One day there was a queen called the Queen of Sheba and she had heard about the wisdom of Solomon and the fame of Solomon and the glory of Solomon and she made that 950 mile journey and she stood there in this palace and she went with him to a Sunday morning worship service and this is what she said to King Solomon. I've heard about you. I've heard about you but now that my eyes have seen, I've got to admit the half has never been told. Brother, we've just seen a little part. We've just seen the half. But come with me the Revelation 4 when John gets raptured out and the church gets raptured out and he leaves gravity and he leaves planet Earth and he gets to the glory world. He says, round about the throne, round about the throne, not just a half, round about, hey, we don't know it all down here. We've not seen it all down down here, we've not felt it all down here, but when we leave this world and get to the glory world, we'll see him and all of his completeness and all of his perfection. Well, glory, I've been told my whole life, and you have too, at the end of the rainbow, there's two things, either a pot of gold or a box of Lucky Charms. Magically delicious. But can I tell you, there is no such thing as the end. I want to borrow your phrase from one of my heroes who is now in heaven, Brother Sammy Allen from Resaca, Georgia. I'm going to borrow your phrase and I'm going to give it to you, Sammy Allen style. Someone said, Brother Sammy, want you to pray for me. Pray for me, Brother Sammy. Pray for me when I come to the end of the way. And Brother Sammy said, there's no such thing as the end of the way. There's only one in, the one you got on at. And there ain't no getting off place. Hallelujah right there. But if there was such a thing as the end of our heavenly rainbow, there's not a pot of gold nor a box of Lucky Charms. There's a whole city full of it. Not Lucky Charms, but pure gold. Whew. We're gonna close here in a second. Now, can you imagine what Noah and his family felt like the next time it thundered? The next time, pfft, lightning. The next time it started raining and wind blowing. 
I believe when they first saw a little dark cloud, they could have easily said, here we go again. I told somebody the other day, I've never seen anything like this pandemic. And I hope I don't ever see anything else like this pandemic. It's devastating. Devastating. Can you imagine how they felt the next time the wind blew? The next time the lightning flashed, the next time the thunder rolled, the next time the rain fell. It had been so easy, brother, to slip into fear and doubt. But before the devil could wreck their mind, they didn't know what to say. Look up! There it is. <laughs> there it is, children. God's promise that he carried us through the last one and he'll carry us through the next one. Let me ask you this and we'll pray. Anybody here ever had God answer a prayer? That wasn't his last one. Anybody ever had God meet a need? That wasn't his last one. Anybody ever had God dry a tear? Won't be his last one. Anybody here knows that he walks on water? It won't be his last one. Oh, that storm, that catastrophe, that deal you're going through wasn't his first, and it won't be his last. And the God that sailed you through many dangers, toils, and snares is the God that'll keep on sailing you through. Because God put a bow in the clouds. That dove says, I got peace. That altar says, I've got praise. And that Rainbow said, I got a promise on the other side. Let me say it like this. His family was saved and his journey was safe. Have you noticed reading Genesis 8 and 9? Everything that went in the boat came out of the boat. And have you noticed they went in through the side? But they came out the top. Woo! One day my ark of safety opened up his side and I got in. But thank God, I'm going higher. and higher and higher someday. Aren't you glad on the other side of catastrophe? Well, glory. Do you feel him tonight? That fluttering down in there, that's that dove. That fluttering in your soul tonight, that's that dove. Praise God. Let's lift our hands and give him glory. And let's look and realize that God put a rainbow in the cloud. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He is a God that will and has kept his promise. Well, I think I'll sing a little bit and then we'll go. Some through the water some through the flood some through the fire but all through the blood some through great sorrow but God gives a song in the night seasons and all the day long away from the mire away from the clay God leads his dear children along away up in glory eternity waits God leads his dear children along give me some harmony church some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. 
shone through great sorrow, but God gives a soul in the night seasons and all the day long. After all of life is over, and our burdens have been lifted and we stand upon the mountain top so tall looking over in the city that the Savior is preparing gives me faith that I can make it I've till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, you have made us sit together in heavenly places. Lord, we're unworthy the least of thy tender mercies. But we crown you tonight with glory and honor and dominion and praise. Thank you, Lord, for passing by the avenues of our soul. Thank you, Lord, for encouraging this body of believers tonight to keep walking, keep serving, keep lifting our voice, one day we'll hear your voice and we'll go home and we'll leave it all behind. And Lord, on the other side of this side, we'll be reminded you was always by our side. And we give you glory tonight for who you are. Help us not to be weary and well-doing for we shall reap if we faint not. We give you glory in Jesus' name.